Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to our Saturday Upgrade and Commander Build video. You all voted, and this is a ship we've been featuring over the weekend. If you didn't catch the devastating game we had on this in our Friday highlight, you can uh, find that video at the end uh, of this um, video <laughs> uh, tag, so you can go back and watch uh, me play this build. Um, and talk about this ship and where I think its strengths um, and talked about a few weaknesses towards the end of that game were regardless uh, Today's video we're gonna be talking about the armor layout um, the style play style of the ship uh, look at the upgrades modules uh, consumables commander and So that we can have a pretty good um, Suggestion with the build and I have some things I actually have to look at because I can't remember uh, some of the things regarding the upgrades so uh, That being said uh, what type of uh, Play style. What is the this ship? Is it a cruiser that um, one likes to hide behind islands? Is this an HE spammer? Is it a ship that uh, you play long distance as a heavy cruiser? Do you play short distance? You know what's what's the catch here? Uh, so in my opinion, this ship uh, works best um, starting at the medium range of let's say like 12 to 15 kilometers. Um, you can really work your concealment. So when I say 12, you're still um, out of uh, side your concealment um, and then maybe the 15 and then when situations allow you really want to push in with this ship as it's extremely rewarding uh, given some of the right situations or circumstances that you find in the battle particularly the flank because um, I believe the play style of this ship works really well on the flanks um, so let's go ahead and talk about the armor uh, so you have a 25 millimeter nose you have a 25 millimeter uh, stern uh, so you can be overmatched by different battleships within the game that are uh, knowledgeable that the fact that you have a softer nose So you just have to be mindful of that um, now granted it is nice that the The bow and the stern are short. They're not very long uh, extending out and that's just due to the Citadel armor Which we're gonna look at having to extend uh, super long all the way toward the faint forward main battery turret and then also these secondary turrets that you have here in the back so your nose can be overmatched um, the battleships that have the right um, pin uh, and size guns uh, be mindful of that so I mean yeah of course the Yamato um, I think a Montana can squash through this I don't remember um, spacing off the top of my head um, so let's go ahead and take off the bow and the stern armor um, and here you can get to see a little bit more what's happening. So we have a 36 millimeter deck uh, armor. So that's actually nice that it's not like a, a 30 or a, a 27 or something like that. Like it's actually uh, decently sturdy. Uh, your superstructure is soft, uh, 16 millimeter. Um, and looking at the guns, um, you're gonna have 330 millimeter on the front. If you remember yesterday's video, um, I actually had my guns inca incapacitated twice um, to the turrets were. So it's 330 on the front, 250 on the side, and then it goes into this 150 up here. So you can kind of see that's slightly angled up. Uh, so it's likely if someone tries to aim at the top, they're just gonna like bounce off um, a ricochet. Um, and then the back, 335. Uh, so decent. So the, your, the back of the, these turrets is actually the strongest, which is kind of ironic, because usually it's the front uh, or the sides of the turrets, which will be the strongest. Um, but it's the rear just by five millimeter more so uh, your front and the back are strong your sides uh, are weak um, and then beneath um, the barbette is 310 millimeter um, so a little bit uh, weaker there I right, would take some more things off here uh, getting down into the Citadel one of the things I should make mention of is actually uh, the casemate armor it's kind of a turtle back scheme similar to something that you might find on the German battleships uh, somewhat similar uh, so you have um, a little bit of the extra armor there uh, so you can see you have this 200 millimeter um, that kind of helps hopefully <laughs> maybe bounce it off or it just goes up into your uh, superstructure instead of into the ship um, in the citadel and then the uh, citadel armor itself it's 50 millimeters on the side uh, front is 200 millimeters so if someone for example, decides to shoot through your nose and, and they have the right angle. You can't actually be citadeled from your front, but they've beefed up a little bit uh, the citadel armor at the 200. So I guess that's nice. Um, now, if we look at the back here, I think it's actually, when, yeah, when you look at the size, it's a bit bigger. 
Uh, so that's just something to be more mindful of. And it's only 100 millimeter in the back. So um, if a battleship is wanting to citadel you through the bow or stern, they're gonna have better chances of doing it through the bow uh, since you don't have a 200 millimeter back here. And secondly, it's wider. It's bigger because we're talking about the, the rear of the ship, not the front. Uh, so it's just barely above waterline. Um, so if you show too much broadside, um, you will get uh, punished uh, for doing such things. Uh, so try not to uh, do that given the circumstances unless you just really need to disengage. Um, and you shouldn't have to be showing your full broadside very often because your all your guns are in the front. Uh, you will have to show a little bit of side, get that third turret off. But if you really work to, <laughs> I for myself, I have to control my greed of wanting to get more damage off with this third gun. Uh, sometimes um, you just have to wait. You fire two guns off and then the ship you're combating with, they fire their salvo and then you can be cheeky and pop out with the third turret and then uh, just bow back in more. So um, just be mindful of your position because you can get wrecked if you show too much broadside. Now in terms of the modules, uh, there's nothing further to upgrade, um, but going over them regardless. Uh, 330 millimeter, 50 millimeter MLE, 1931, and a turret. Uh, so these guns, uh, in terms of their um, penetration values and I think the fl uh, flight distance, uh, I really need to check this and actually we might just do that now, um, is the same as the Dunkirk. Uh, so I'm actually going to pull up uh, the six, that being the battleship. Oh, and cruiser. Uh, so I wanted to look at the artillery here. Uh, initial velocity, 885 meters a second for the HE and 870 for the AP. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, I wanted to say that yesterday um, for the f uh, flight shell travel time, but I wasn't entirely sure, so I didn't say so because I didn't want to say something wrong. But I knew we could check it out today um, in looking at it. So. Um, that is definitely the case here. Did I, oh, lost the ship. Let's go back to our tier tens. Uh, so yeah, so these our guns are like essentially Dunkirk guns, except they're a three by three versus a two by four turret, just different size turrets. Uh, so the gun performance is going to be the same. Uh, so for those of you uh, commanders here might be familiar with playing Dunkirk, if you already have it, um, it's a nice ship, um, a tier six uh, battleship, uh, then it won't feel uh, too different here. Your real time is we have it down to 21.1 seconds with this build. Our 180 degree turn time is that of equivalency of a battleship, 34.5 seconds, but you're not hurting so much because all the turrets are on the front. So it's not like you're needing to constantly do this uh, 270 degree uh, turret traverse uh, radius as an example. HE shell damage 4800, maximum AP shell damage 9700, same as on the Dunkirk. The hull is 71,450 um, and I think we look at our commander, yes I am running the survivability expert so we've buffed that up uh, further so you can see in terms of our survivability rating we're 91 with this build, otherwise we'd be closer to, was it 67, 66,000? Uh, just trying to say it off the top of my head. Uh, so uh, this commander, I run on multiple um, cruisers. So that's one of the reasons why I also like having survivability expert, uh, be able to live and fight in the battle that much longer. Uh, you can see the armor, it ranges from that 16 to 335 millimeter, which is just on the back of that turret. Um, secondary guns, 10 AA mounts, 38. When you look at the AA defense, it's 83, it's good. You'll do fine against tier eights, um, but you're not gonna prevent a f uh, first strike from a tier eight carrier unless he just flies right into all of your flak. Uh, and tier 10 CVs you will um, most likely struggle with, as is uh, traditional for about most ships in the game. We'll talk a little about secondaries as well um, and highlighting them. Our gunfire control system range, uh, our main battery firing range, excuse me, is 19.6 kilometers, which is uh, really good. There's no need, in my opinion, to extend the range uh, of these guns. Um, I'm not sure you can even take a spotter plane, yeah. Um, because, as I said, I feel like this ship plays really well in that 12 to 15 kilometers. And then when opportunity allows, use the engine boost, uh, use your hydroacoustic search, 
uh, you go in and you deal uh, chaos and havoc I and mean, having yourself a nice devastating game uh, when the enemy uh, is not uh, too aware of your schemes or very weak on the flank as an example which I've talked about in the gameplay footage I showed yesterday which will be at the end of this clip propulsion 240,000 um, horsepower uh, without the serum mic flag you're running 33 knots with you're running 34.7 knots and then your engine boost is the 20% engine boost. So there's uh, several different ranges of engine boost in the game. I think there's the 8, then there's the 15, then there's 20, and then there's one after this. It's like, uh, it's on Ragnar. I can't even remember what percentage that one is. Uh, it's the 30% emergency uh, engine power. Uh, so 20% is really nice. Um, so you can take that 20% uh, on top of your 34.7 knots. Uh, and that means you're going to be adding almost seven knots uh, on top of this. Uh, so that was going to put you over 40, almost, um, yeah, you will be. You will be over 41 knots. Uh, so that's uh, pretty fast. Uh, maybe similar to maybe uh, commanders who like playing or who own the Georgia. Uh, when you pop that engine boost, that can be quite fun. So in terms of the modules, uh, you can see uh, sorry, upgrades, modules, upgrades. Uh, I have taken the main armaments modification one uh, for reasons that I've already highlighted, um, that your main battery is in, uh, possible to be knocked out. And it, your ship really revolves around these uh, main battery guns. So I've taken the main armaments modification to reduce the risk of the main battery becoming capacitated by negative 20%. Main battery survivability, plus 50%. Main battery repair time, negative 20%. Uh, to me, uh, this is what you want to take. There's no need to take um, any of these other upgrades. So you want to run that. Um, you don't need the AA um, auxiliary armaments modification one for your survivability, uh, AA survivability and secondary battery survivability. Um, there's other ship cruisers in the game that can do these two roles better. Magazine modification one, risk of your ship's magazine detonating negative 70%. If you're playing ranked, playing clan battles, random battles, you don't need it. You run the Juliet Charlie combat signal. Um, this was the combat signal I was running in Friday's video, and we'll talk about that a little bit more here shortly. And you don't need damage control party modification one. Um, you want to protect your main battery guns. Um, here, if you do not have the coal resources to pick up one of the special upgrades, um, I would recommend probably going for the damage control system modification one uh risk of catching fire negative five percent risk of flooding negative three percent because you kind of be this little bit more of an aggressive uh cruiser when the times come for you to build push a flank um i've only had limited play time with the marseille uh, but i've enjoyed playing uh the previous uh line of these ships so like sherborg and i can't remember what the name of the tour nine went off the top of my head right now um, and I've not really had issues with the engine power uh, being knocked out. I think I, once or twice the carriers dropped torpedoes and knocked my engine out. But um, I think in those situations, I think I had my damage control party uh, to utilize in those scenarios. But with your speed, when you're really pushing up, it's hard for a carrier to actually land accurate torpedo drops on you, as an example. Um, but there's really two special upgrades, I'd say, that work really well here. Um, this being the Hydro Acoustic Search Modification 1. Uh, so this is what's giving that us that almost um, the action time of 132 seconds. Well, we have over two minute action time on our hydroacoustic search. Um, this is, I would say, more in mind of defense survivability, um, so that we are extending that hydroacoustic range uh, or our action time of our hydroacoustic search. So when we're pushing up, uh, we're more aware of torpedoes. We're more aware of uh, catching out destroyers and smoke screens, as an example, uh, as happened in yesterday's video. So for me, that's why I've gone uh, with this. Uh, otherwise, you could really go for the engine boost modification one. Your action time on your engine boost right now um, is actually uh, three minutes. Uh, yeah, three minute action time. Uh, so you could boost that up close to four minutes if you'd like. Um, it's really up to you. Um, I think either of them work uh, fine. Um, like for example, I think with Colbert, I run the engine boost modification one. Um, we can look at that. Sorry, I just like both of these ships a lot. Um, yeah, that's what I ran here. So you could run one or the other. It's really up to you. Um, 
I like running it more on Marseille because of it being a, a larger ship, like it's a heavy cruiser, um, almost like a battle cruiser, um, if I'm being honest. Uh, so I like being able to mitigate damage that I'm taking if torpedoes being fired at me, or just catching out that destroyer or submarine, um, as an example with the hydroacoustic search. Um, especially if you're kind of, I referred to the ship yesterday as being like maybe if you have a push, like you're the tip of the sword in the ship, I would say. Um, so being able to uh, not have to rely on your friends or allies, uh, teammates to do the necessary spotting for you or something like that. Um, you're able to kind of take care of yourself. Otherwise, the engine boost modification uh, one is a also a very great choice. It, to me, it's really hard to choose between these two, but for now I've just gone with the hydroacoustic search modification one. So that is up to you. For the third slot, um, as I talked about yesterday, I've gone with the aiming systems modification one. Uh, what this does is, is it's giving us a better horizontal and vertical dispersion. So you have a Sigma of 1.8 uh, on the Marseille. And when you take the aiming systems modification, you see the maximum battery shell dispersion is negative 7%. Um, so that is getting our maximum dispersion horizontally underneath 200 meters to 198 meters, or I think previously it's 212. And then the maximum dispersion vertically is 119 meters versus I think it's like over close to 130. Maybe it's just under 130. So we're having tighter shell groupings, which to me I really like. So I'm uh, getting a better performance out of my guns. Uh, the Sigma is just the chances of your shells landing um, in the center of where you were aiming. I mean, there's nothing we can do to affect Sigma here. Um, just the dispersion horizontally and vertically. Um, I did discuss in yesterday's video uh, when we ran up on the Kitakaze um, that if you're not uh, being mindful with your guns, if you have the engine boost going and you do an aggressive turn, um, your turrets cannot um, outpace the turn of your ship. Uh, so the Kitakaze popped up in front of me. I was in the midst of a high speed maneuvering turn and I was using free look on my mouse. Um, I wasn't able to get my turrets back on him in time before he was finished off by um, allies because he was pretty low with his health to begin with, I think, 3 or 4k. So you can outturn your guns um, with the ship maneuverability. So some commanders I know do not like that. So then you may want uh, Savvy having the main battery modification too in that case. For myself, I just really like the aiming systems modification one because I'm getting more accurate salvos. Not to mention that we get a slight buff with our secondaries here. Um, and we'll talk more about that when the time comes. Um, otherwise, it's really just between those two. For the fourth slot, uh, this is what I wasn't sure about in yesterday's video, so I didn't say. I was wondering if I had the damage control system modification two, and I'm thankful that I didn't, that I had the propulsion modification one instead. And this is your time taking to reach full engine power when accelerating, whether you're going forwards or reverse. Uh, and I really like that because these French cruisers play so well uh, with the engine boost. Um, in particular, even your destroyers. Um, and so it's really nice having that propulsion. Um, and maybe you're sitting still, a carrier decides to drop you, having this additional propulsion to be able to get out of the way or cut and juke uh, and avoiding the torpedoes from enemy CV is really helpful um, in my opinion. So I like this. Um, yes, you're large, but your concealment's 11.6 um, and you're not that um, large or you cannot be that uh, noticeable uh, as an example. Then you talk about the steering gear performance. So your rotor shift time is 14.5 seconds. Your turning circle radius is a 770 meters, uh, which in my mind, I don't think that's too bad. Um, your opinion may beg to differ, um, but you can get your rotor shift time down by 20%. Uh, so that means you'd be getting it um, close to three seconds uh, shaved off. Uh, so maybe you're like at 12 or just under 12 second uh, rotor shift time. Uh, for myself, I don't really care too much about this. Um, I'd rather have the propulsion um, and playing along, I think, with the ship strengths a bit more, especially if you have the opportunity to push out um, and slap an enemy target with a devastating uh, salvo from these nine 330 millimeter guns. Um, fifth slot, uh, I've elected to go with the concealment system modification one. Um, detectability range of ship down by negative 10% and then pull that up. Go back to this. Scar detectability range, 10, negative 10%. Dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5%, meaning they have slightly worse dispersion um, accuracy when firing upon your ship. 
So attack ability range by C, 11.6. Uh, we were playing in a thunderstorm yesterday, and that dropped us down to 10.4. Uh, by air, you're 8.2. And then, of course, your assured detectability range is 2 kilometers uh, regardless. Um, so I like this. I like being able to get the concealment down. So when I'm pushing a flank 1, they don't know I'm there till. Oh, shoot, he's 11.6 kilometers away and coming at us at 41 knots. Um, gonna be really hard to disengage here, uh, as an example, if you find yourself in a favorable situation to push. Uh, or if you're needing to go dark, the push isn't working, and you just have to kill the engine boost, um, slow down, or turn that back and disengage, uh, you can do so a bit more easily with this ship, and having the consumer system modification one. Um, but if you wanted to go for an anti-conceal build, you could drop concealment system modification one, and you could pick up the steering gears modification two. Normally, I don't always say this so readily, but I think it is possible with the Marseille. Um, granted, you are going to be pushing your concealment up over 13 kilometers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you get your rotor shift time negative 40%, and your steering gears repair time if they get knocked out negative 80%, uh, which is uh, really good. Uh, so that is possible to do here with this ship, um, especially if you're taking something like the top grade gunner, which I have. Um, but I'll get into that with the commander here shortly. I also have consumable uh, action time plus 10%, so then you're just extending your uh, consumables among your uh, repair party, your engine boost, your hydro acoustic search, and your main battery reload booster consumables uh, that we have here. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't know, I think it's worth uh, picking up. You also have the torpedo lookout system, which uh, extends your assured acquisition range of torpedoes to 1.8 kilometers. When you use hydroacoustic search, it expands this even further. We all notice torpedoes uh, even more in advance. But I don't really think um, that's the best to run on Marseille. I would say number one and then number two, if you were asking me to rank those. And then let's talk about the six slots. So I'm running the main battery modification three. Main battery reload time, negative 12%. So that's what is, is getting us down to the 21.1 second reload time. But you can see it comes at a cost with your main battery traverse speed at negative 13%, uh, which is the 34.5 second, 180 degree turn time. Um, to me, it's worth paying that uh, price because again, you, all your turrets are located on the front of your ship. Um, so that's not really gonna be an issue uh, with these turrets. Um, and then you get to be cheeky, you pop out the third uh, turret when possible if you're firing behind like a sloping island. Uh, you know, you can, you can be showing a little more side to get that third turret off. Um, but it's not that big of a deal because usually you're going to be bow on to your targets. You're not going to be, you don't want to be broadside, right? And uh, but not too often do you really want to be, you know, your turrets looking back this way um, because it's just so much more easier to land pins and stuff across your deck and superstructure. Um, so being able to have, uh, be more of this ship that's bow in, it's harder for the enemy to deal with and then having that strong armor on your guns does help maybe get some ricochets and you take less damage, but maybe it's sometimes at the cost of one of your main battery turrets being incapacitated. Um, so for me, it's uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, I want to increase my DPM, like the really good game we had yesterday, where we broke over 200,000 damage. Your gunfire control system modification two, this extends your main battery firing range. Uh, don't take this, you don't need it. Um, if now I can understand with other ships, heavy heavy cruisers, battle cruisers in the game. You know I can see you find worth in this with something like Moskva, Stalingrad, uh, something that can really reach out and still pack a punch. Um, these guns do hurt, uh, of course, but um, you're not playing this as a long range heavy cruiser. You want to play it as medium range and brawling range. Uh, so then you just spent three million uh, credits for a upgrade that's doing you nothing. Um, so you're always going to get benefit out of your main body modification 3 in my opinion. You don't need auxiliary armaments modification 2. Again, there's other ships in the game that play the AA role and the secondary role uh, better than the Marseille. Uh, in terms of the consumables, you have a damage control party. Consumable action time 5 seconds with one of our combat signals. Uh, this one, uh, we get 57 seconds instead of the 60 seconds, which I'll actually... Uh, take these off. Uh, well, I can do that one. We already talked about that one. Um, so uh, you just want to be able to use this wisely. Um, 
probably going to be using this if you lose a gun or let's say your uh, gun gets incapacitated and you're on fire, then that's a good time to use the damage control party. Your repair party right now, uh, HP per second, 357. If I use the India Delta combat signal, um, that gets us up to 428. Action time of 28 seconds, reload time 80 seconds. Uh, if we take the November Foxtrot, it's going to drop that down to 76. So you're just being able to get your consumables up that much quicker um, in close range. So that's why I really like running uh, this because of our consumable layout. Uh, that we have five consumables here on this ship. So let's make use of them um, and get that cooldown time uh, even shorter. Um, you get four uh, as well. Uh, if I look at the commander build, I have taken the superintendent, so I'm getting the additional hydroacoustic search, engine boost, uh, repair party, and main battery reload booster. Uh, otherwise, you're just at three, uh, three, 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 and uh, four. Um, so I want, or sorry, let me go back to that and look. Yeah, I said that right. Um, so I want to be able to have additional ones of these. Uh, I used all my heals yesterday. Uh, and we were really making good use of our other consumables. Um, so I like running superintendent uh, with my commander. Uh, you have two options with your uh, consumables here. You have engine boost or fighter. Uh, don't take the fighter. <laughs> engine boost is always going to be more worth it, even if you're running into games with a carrier, just because you're able to do so much with this ship uh, with the uh, engine boost. And that's not your plus 8% or your plus 15%. It's your plus 20% engine boost. Um, so really make use of that French uh, engine boost speed here on the Marseille. Um, but looking at this uh, consumable standalone, uh, action time of 180 seconds. The reload time is 85.5. I take it off, it's going to be 90 seconds. I think going to the next one, you have an option between high acoustic search and defensive AA fire. Um, we highlighted that our AA rating um, is 83. Again, this, there's other cruisers, heavy and light cruisers that play the AA role better than the Marseille. Um, and I don't really find much use taking this, but I do find a lot of use taking the hydroacoustic search because I believe this ship's play style is pushing the flank, collapsing flanks. Um, so that often means you're gonna be running into torpedoes, destroyers, and submarines. Um, and this is just really good to have overall in my opinion. You can see detection of torpedoes is 3.5 kilometers. Detection of ships is five kilometers. Um, and then submarine spotting range at maximum depth, two kilometers. So you will pick up subs um, that are within uh, range, uh, even if they are uh, deep underwater. Consumable action time of 120 seconds. Um, and this is tying into uh, the hydroacoustic search modification one special upgrade that we did take. Uh, otherwise, it's closer to 100 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Uh, so I want to extend the hydroacoustic time, search time. So that's what we've done here. Reload time of 114 seconds. Otherwise, it's 120 seconds without um, our November Foxtrot signal. Next up, we have the main battery reload booster. Reduces main battery gun reload time. This is the fun um, ace in the sleeve, I would say, uh, with the Marseille and being able to dish out additional damage per minute. Uh, when you catch out ships broadside um, like the... Um, Nevsky yesterday, the um, Borgon, the Lion, uh, I think we even used it on the Drake. Uh, so there's just a lot of opportunities to use this, especially when a ship decides to get a little comfortable and they show you too much broadside. Uh, make use of this, it reduces your main battery load time down by negative 50%. Which right now is 21.1 seconds, so you're just getting over uh, 10 seconds. Yeah, just 10.55, 10 uh, I guess is what it would be. I'm not saying you count possibly Adrenaline Rush or Top Grade Gunner, so then you could be under 10 seconds easily to nine. Action time, 15 seconds. Reload time, 76 seconds without November Foxtrot. It's 80, um, and you get five of them. In terms of the consumable layout, uh, I also like to run Sierra Bravo signal, um, which extends our action time of our hard acoustic search, so then we're getting 132 seconds. And then ramming flag, you definitely want this. Um, and then I run the India Yankee and the Julia Yankee Bisso 2. Uh, flooding recovery time, negative 20%. Fire exertion time, negative 20%. Um, if you were asking me if I was going to give up something to take for secondaries, as an example, as I want to talk about briefly before we go into the commander build, and I've been really lengthy talking about this ship in this video, so I do apologize. Um, 
Oof. I really like this setup, um, but I'd probably give up the Sierra Bravo um, to pick this up, which extends our mini secondary battery firing range plus 5%, secondary battery reload time, negative 5%, maximum dis secondary battery shell dispersion, negative 5%. Uh, without this, real quick, the secondaries um, have a 5.9 second reload time and maximum range of 8.7 um, for both the uh, these style turrets. So when we take this, we actually bump it up over nine kilometers and 9.2 kilometer range with 5.6 second reload time. So you can have some fun with this. We did get a close quarters uh, against an enemy destroyer yesterday, but I mean, he was like two kilometers away or something. So um, this helped in the sense of reload time um, and uh, dispersion if we would have taken that. But I like this instead. Getting into the commander, uh, I will try not to take very long on this. Um, we are running a seasoned commander, uh, Charles Henry Honro. Um, with the cruisers, he has two enhanced skills. Um, grease the gears, um, main body traverse speed plus 20%. So I've taken this kind of to help offset the sixth slot, the main body modification uh, two, I believe it's called. And you also get an enhanced adrenaline rush. So rather than this being negative 0.20%, it's negative 0.25%. And so this being plus 15%, it's plus 20%. So um, Charles Honro, uh, Henri Honro, as it's uh, 12 o'clock here now in Norway, uh, is in the armory. Uh, you'll find him under the Commander's tab, and I already own him, so I have to scroll down here. He's right here for 1,500 doubloons. I picked him up pretty early on um, with my Marceau in mind. Um, so I like having him for those two enhanced skills. Um, he's just like uh, this much more aggressive uh, commander. So he has the same enhanced skills for shore battleship uh, cruiser. Um, the other commander that would be worth considering is uh, Felipe Albinia. He has um, enhanced skill of the survivability expert. So we have a, a greater health pool. Um, and then he has some talents, but I'm not really going to get into that. But he's another option that you could be running um, here on your Marseille. Now, uh, what would I recommend for a 10-point build? Uh, starting off, I'd say a last stand. The ship immune is partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine and steering goose incapacitated. Um, right now, I've been running the priority target. Um, this helps tell me because this ship I, the place I believe it is is to be a flank pusher. You collapse flanks, and this begins to tell me if I'm overextending. And a lot of ships, uh, enemy ships on the enemy team, are beginning to target me as they perceive me as a threat. So I know that I need to back off or I need to go dark. Um, also gives me information if a destroyer is trying to torpedo me. Why my hydroacoustic search is down when they're flashing. So it goes from one uh, detected, one detected, one detected. That tells me that the destroyer that I know is nearby is probably just dumped torpedoes, and he's switching back in between. Um, so I like having that. And then uh, for a six point commander, I'd say go ahead and pick up a Dillon Rush. Um, so you're getting that reload time down even further as it enhances your ship parameters for each 1% of HP lost. Uh, in addition to your secondaries and your continuous AA damage gets a slight buff up. Then I would say go ahead and pick up Concealment System or Concealment Expert. Um, so, you know, we have that nice uh, full conceal of 11.6. Um, I think it's nice running the conceal build on this line. Um, you could run an anti-conceal build, um, but I, I personally would need to test that more out. Maybe I'll do that on a public test server. But for now, um, I think most players um, benefit um, in the general player base from doing more of a standard build here. So that's what I'd recommend for a 10-point commander. Uh, after that, I would say with a 13-point commander, go ahead and pick up Superintendent. So you have four hydro key six searches, you have four engine boosts, you have four repair parties, and you have five main battery reload boosters um, for your guns. And then um, probably actually go ahead next as a 14-point skill, pick up Grease the Gears. So you having that better main battery traverse speed to help offset uh, some of the other, if you do this build that I'm doing, this is what I would pick up for as a 14 point commander. Um, and then that leaves you with seven points. Um, and at this point, you could decide to pick up the survivability expert first, um, which I believe is what I did uh, here. Um, so we're increasing our health pull uh, for each ship tier by plus 450. 
And then uh, for your last four points, then pick up the top grade gunner. Um, this also has a permanent effect of your secondary battery reload time, negative 10%, and it can be activated, which increases your main battery reload speed while an enemy ship is detected within your ship's standard detectability range. And so our standard detectability range right now is 11.6 kilometers. Um, but if you get like into a storm, thunderstorm, that's 10.4. Um, so then I think you have to be a 10.4 then, um, I think. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, or you could go with that anti-conceal build and you'll get more use out of these guns. But again, um, I think it takes a bit more of an intermediate to experienced player to pull off a lighthouse build on the uh, Marseille. Uh, and for the majority of the player base, I'd recommend um, going for a build very similar to this. Now, um, to wrap this up, um, is there anything else I'd really want to say about the skills here? I mean, if you're okay not having priority target, then I could see there being used in the focus fire training. Um, this is basically going to be um, enhancing your AA. So your priority, priority sector reinforcement plus 25%. Number of shell explosions in A salvos plus one percent. Um, so you get a slight buff there to your AA. Um, I could see that being uh, interesting. Or alternatively, the consumables enhancements, which is going to extend your action time of your hydroacoustic search and your engine boost. Um, so there's um, some possibilities there. This won't affect your repair party or your main battery load booster. Um, but for now, I really like running this build as a whole on my Marseille. Uh, so if you have questions of a skill I did not cover in the comments, uh, of course, feel free to let me know. Um, but that is going to bring our video to a close. I try to keep these videos in any 30 minutes, so I do apologize. I got uh, a bit uh, talked at length, probably too long in a few things. But uh, I just want to be able to help give you um, best information and information I feel like I would want to know as a player in World of Warships when taking out um, this heavy cruiser. Marseille. So if you liked today's video, consider giving a thumbs up. If you are really enjoying the content, uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already subscribed. Um, if you didn't like the video, of course, there's the thumbs down. You can select there as well. So until next time, take care.